Hi guys, Kellen and I spend all of our time trying to figure out how to navigate complicated cannabis challenges. Today, we are excited to bring to you a solution for your accounting needs. Navigating 280E, keeping clean books, and providing financial and accounting advice is a massive headache for so many businesses. End to End is a team of CPAs with backgrounds from the big public firms that specialize in the cannabis industry. End to End is offering a no-cost consultation if you tell them the dime sent you. That's right, free accounting advice. Go to n2nadvisors.com now to take advantage of this. That's n, the number 2, n, a, d, v, i, s, o, r, s.com to get free accounting advice now. Let's talk about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. That's right. No more excuses. Get your lazy ass off the couch. Go start a podcast. There's the creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Once again, no more excuses. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Could it be easier? Even better, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. That's right. They're paying us for this ad. Thank you very much, Anchor. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started now. This is The Dime, a 10-minute dive into the cannabis and hemp industry through trends, insights, predictions, and tangents. What's up, guys? This is the week of October 8th. This is The Dime, as always. I've got Kellen here with me. This week, we're talking about cannabis and other smokable herbs. As more and more people hopefully move away from smoking tobacco, alternative herbs to smoke alongside cannabis have started to become more and more popular. What herbs are safe remain to be seen and you can assume that something is safe because it's a plant. True or not true, that remains to be determined. Smoking herbs is a great way to add flavor and additional properties to your cannabis. Kellen, for example, lavender is known for its calming properties containing the terpene linalool, which is found in certain- Linalool. Linalool, sorry which is found in certain strains of cannabis. The interaction of this terpene when mixed with cannabis creates a calming feeling in many users. And it's said that a little bit of lavender goes a long way. Kellen, have you ever mixed lavender with cannabis? Yeah, but not in the traditional sense of taking lavender leaves and like grinding them up with the cannabis. I have taken lavender and I extracted the linalool from the lavender using steam distillation, right? Which is how they make a lot of perfumes, right? So I bought a steam distillation setup, extracted the linalool from the lavender, and then used the linalool or the lavender concentrate. It wasn't just straight linalool. There's a bunch of other terpenes and stuff in there probably, but used the concentrate from the steam distillation of lavender to create a quote unquote calming vape pen for a client in California. Uh, there was a winery and they used uh, some lavender that they grew at their vineyard and they had uh, a little party and they wanted these vape pens to hand out to all the people that attended their uh, fiesta at the winery and we generated the lavender infused vape pen. So I have seen it. I haven't seen someone just straight up grind lavender up, right? And so, I mean, it's not too far-fetched, right? Like those terpenes are prevalent in cannabis, right? Um, one of our favorite, uh, groups, uh, Cody Sanchez runs, a a PE firm, I think called Entourage Effect Capital. Have, have you heard of that, Brian? Yeah, I had slightly heard of that. <laughs> Shout out to Cody for, for that. Uh, Kellen, I got a question for you though. Is there any scientific concern when combining other herbs with kind of like that same Entourage Effect? Any, any concerns or fears that if you combine certain chemicals together, they could elicit certain reactions that might be compromising to the individual. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, like that, this, there is, this is the wild west, right? Like, <laughs> like we are, there is no, there's not a lot of science supporting what people are putting into their bodies in these spaces, right? Like we're just mixing up plants and smoking them. Like that's literally what that boils down to, right? Like, Unfortunately, the way that this space works is that people go, hey, I've been doing this in the woods. It kind of works for me. Hey, science, you want to come help explain what's going on here? And so science is always, especially in this 
space had to be a, a reactive entity and not a proactive entity where you see in the more traditional industries like pharma, right? Where they are literally figuring out what chemicals cause these interactions and then providing those chemicals to individuals in very controlled environments and very purified methods at specific doses to see how individuals affect, affect them from a clinical trial perspective, right? Like that in essence is the mo most finite way of mixing plants together, right? Like 90% of our, I think more than 90% of our pharmaceuticals all were derived from plants, right? So yeah, we found out that, hey, this cancer drug comes from this bark out of this tree in Africa. Turns out there's not a lot of those trees. So what do we do? We take that chemical and we synthesize it to be able to produce it in quantities to treat the masses, right? So like we've been mixing chemicals together and seeing how they affect people for a long time. And it's just, it's just a really different concept than kind of the 21st century Western mes medicine, right? I mean, they do this in China a lot. Yeah, I, I think that's a great response. Uh, the next question <laughs> I have for you is, would you smoke have... lavender, Brian? I, probably not. Um, maybe, right? Maybe, if you were maybe right. Like it, if, if Dustin had put together one of his spliffs of CBG, CBC, and some lavender, then maybe. Depending on who handed it to me would really dictate if right, we were passing it around. Circle, peer pressure would get the best, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't peer pressure doesn't really work <laughs> on me. It's really more about the individual that created the the cocktail is, is how yeah. it works for me. Kellen, have you ever smoked any other herbs outside of cannabis? And we can certainly bleep them out if they are illegal substances. Uh tobacco. Okay. Um yeah, tobacco. I can't think of any other plant I've smoked. Uh, I guess I, once when I was a really l little kid, I was like, I think I smoked some grass once when I was really, really little, like 12 maybe. Have, you know have, what I mean? Like trying to be a cool kid. Have you ever smoked salvia? No. So like that was like a big thing in college, like my freshman and sophomore year, right? Like everyone was smoking salvia and they're like, oh, it's so crazy, bro. And I was like, yeah, I just smoke weed, right? Like I was like, that works. So like salvia is supposed to be like the alternative to weed. I was like, I don't need to not smoke weed. So like, I'm just going to smoke weed. Why would I smoke this salvia basalt thing? So I never did that. Did you smoke salvia? Uh, unfortunately, I have. <laughs> um, That's a hard yes. <laughs> I, I had. I have done it mm, twice, <laughs> maybe three times. Awful every time. Uh, I don't like it. Awful nothing about every time. It. Um, there's a certain image that stuck in my head from, from when it ex I experienced it and then watching others experience it, uh, I'm for sure, no expert on it, but from what I recall, there's like different levels that you get to from like a psychoactive standpoint and then hallucination and watching the individuals I was there with kind of go from like, it doesn't work to kind of the different stages is frightening. And for someone like myself, who's not the biggest fan of hallucinogens, I didn't really enjoy it. So I would, it was mind blowing that you could purchase it, I think at a gas station or something ridiculous. And then all of a sudden we're ripping this in the college bathroom, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> just terrible. Um, and then just the idea of it, and you're not supposed to be in confined spaces. You're supposed to be in big wide open. So to have four of us in a shared bathroom in college is a terrible situation and it's, it's not great. And I would caution everyone to, to have a more open experience if they did kind of choose to go that route, but it's legal and it, and it's for sure shouldn't be. Kind of, I don't know. It's like kind of legal. I heard something. I haven't really like looked into the salvia legality it was, situation. It was, it was terrible. Recently. It was, it was really, really terrible. Um, Prediction time, Kellen. Do you believe that cannabis companies or hemp companies will start to create prepackaged products consisting of various cannabinoids to try and elicit or replicate the multipurpose vitamin feel and provide the user with various resources to kind of arrive at the certain destination or result? So I don't want to take it, I don't think that, I think that's just a long stretch to kind of apply that to a smokable product. There is a really, really cool product in Colorado called 1908 is the brand. 
uh, go look it up. Um, they produce some really high-end boutique chocolates, 1908 does. And in those chocolates, they play off of this exact concept, right? So they are adding, I think, lavender and some other like fancy herbs, like kava maybe, kava root or something like that, into the chocolate. And then they've taken the whole sativa hybrid indica aspect of cannabis and then added these herbs to try to highlight the sativa entity associated with that strain, right? Or highlight the indica. So they have like lavender in with an indica strain into the chocolate that's supposed to help elicit like sleep and calming effects, right? So they're doubling down on the herbs that are supposed to elicit that interaction, if you will. We did do a project for a client um, out in Florida, Medicinal Mary's, I think, and they added, they have like kava root and all these other random herbs mixed in with their CBD as well. So that's another example of kind of the uh, niche companies kind of taking this idea and trying to take it to market right now. No idea how successful they are, but um, we'll see. I mean, would you eat a, a chocolate bar at least, Ryan? I know you're not a smoker, but would you eat a chocolate bar that had like lavender and mugwort and maybe some other random grasses or something that you'd never heard of? I mean, you would try it, right? Not a chocolate bar. If it was like a gummy bear, absolutely. But what, you definitely not chocolate? a chocolate bar. I'm not a chocolate bear. It's just what if it's dark chocolate? then for sure not. Like you're moving away from the likelihood that I'll try it. I would say- I was thinking that was a health thing, but okay. <laughs> no, I just don't want, I would eat a gummy bear. It's like, can you put it in a cookie? Like, can you, can you give me a- Yeah, well, well, then I'm fine. it's then, a cookie. Then I'll it's eat a it. lavender infused cookie. Hopefully it doesn't taste like that. Hopefully it tastes like a cookie, but I would try it, right? I'm, I'm open to trying anything that can, can help and that hopefully has some scientific benefits in, in order to get certain feelings. And we just kind of expand on that. Is that- very similar to taking like a gel capsule and putting CBN and some melatonin inside and saying, this will help you sleep. Because it, it seems like we've already kind of went there. But the biggest problem I think you and I have is that when someone takes that pill because I can't sleep and when you can't sleep, it's a terrible thing and you're desperate to find that solution and you're relying or you're hopeful that the CBN is going to help you accomplish it and you pay $90 for a bottle when you could just go to CVS and spend 13 on some melatonin I think people get kind of pissed off that the fact that they spent 10x on a product and without actually making a valuable combination, it remains to be seen if it's worthwhile to experiment with those products because a lot of people might have a one and done experience. And you just kind of wonder how much more research needs to go into this to really understand exactly how to derive those specific benefits. Yeah, I, I think that you made a really good point there that it's like a, a speed to market versus acceptance kind of problem, I think, right? Like, okay, we want to be the first ones to market with a product like this, right? But the acceptance of individuals, because it's so new and there's not a lot of science behind it and people and consumers are kind of like, huh, well, that's interesting. Never seen something like that. They're not going to go purchase it right away from an impulse buy. Or they might, and it might be like, oh, that was weird. Didn't do what they said. Like, now I'm done with those products forever, right? right? So I I think it's it's kind of like it might be it might be too soon in my opinion to kind of like jump on that bandwagon and run with it from like a, a launching a um a brand kind of with that as its um ethos if you will i mean I, I would try one of those products but i don't know it's just is like it kind of changes the whole narrative for me right when instead of like now my brain kind of goes way away from like i'm just shopping for some cannabis product to like go watch a movie and like eat some gummy bears and like you know like watch a movie and go to bed versus like I wonder how lavender affects my like mentality like you know what I mean it's just like a completely different lens now that I'm shopping with and like it's like okay no I was actually here just to buy some weed like I don't know why I'm thinking about lavender and how that affects my brain but like move on right so, so I, I think there's a, it's a steep hill to climb. I, I don't think I don't think as the as the marketing perspective, I don't think they'll market it as lavender um, gummy bears. They'll market it as like a calming gummy bear because as a consumer, you're extremely simple, and they don't want you simple. They, yeah, they calming don't want basic. you. They don't want to raise any questions. So like if you're like like you just described, they don't want you to to look at a product and evaluate in your head how will calm. How will the lavender make me feel with the gummy bear? Instead, they'll take it one step further and be like, this bear will make you calm. And I think that is a lot more comforting to select it versus the unknown factor of like lavender and all these other various 
herbs that could elicit certain feelings. So I, I think from a marketing perspective, you'll never see it as pronounced because I think as a consumer, we're, we're less interested in what the actual components are and more interested in what it, how it'll make me feel. Yeah, and that's a really good point because that's it, they are, right? Like we're just interested in how am I going to feel after I eat this? Like I don't exactly. care what's in it. Clearly it's safe because it's on this shelf, right? And so like as long as it does what it says and it makes me feel X, then I'm happy. Science matters in this country. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you don't, I mean, you can disagree. Cool. Thanks everyone for their time. Tell me, boy, you make me so bored. You need to walk the other way. I tell you once more. Hi, my name is Kira Reed, and I'd like to invite you to be inspired by the women who are leading in the cannabis industry. Each week, we will discuss empowerment, leadership, and what it means to be a woman in charge in marijuana, hemp, and CBD. As the founder of the Women Empowered in Cannabis community, I have had the great pleasure to get to know many brilliant and talented women who are CEOs, executives, politicians, advocates, and community leaders that are focused on creating a cannabis economy that is just, fair, and equal. We'll learn how these women make decisions, how they navigate a predominantly male industry, and what they're doing to level the playing field for women. I hope you'll join us.